can not get, staying. Can I get two shots of Red Stag? Not staying. Two shots of Southern Comfort. I am not staying. Miller Lite. I am doing these two shots and I'm leaving. And a Red Bull, please. I don't think there's a very good way for me to objectively talk about my business when I'm intoxicated. So I don't like to do it. Hey, that's smart thinking. And then if I do talk about it when I'm intoxicated, then I'll start overthinking about it in my own head and that's not healthy. No, absolutely not. Yes. Right? We're not going backwards to our old to our old selves. No. Correct. <laughs> How about a shot, buddy? Thank you. <laughs> Here is what I will say is that in the past two to three months, I have come to terms with how um, emotionally immature I am and thinking that I was emotionally very mature. Dude, when I went through that and I was like, man, I am fucking stupid. So how'd you come to this realization? I was on my way out the door from the corner place when Jacob showed up. He persuaded me into doing a couple shots. I had already been here for a few hours and you can tell by the slur and pitch of my voice, I'm a little bit more intoxicated than usual. And when I mentioned my business, I was talking about my personal stuff, not my actual entrepreneur related stuff. Jana brings up a good question though. How did I get to that realization? You're listening to Shantaraj. Whatever brought you here, thank you. And keep listening if you'd like. My name's Sean, and I've decided to create a podcast that is the current story of my life. And as I navigate everyday life and stumble through things like mental health, business, relationships, and other things, you'll meet a lot of my friends. I hope that many of you can relate to my journey. Also, just a heads up, there is some explicit language in this podcast. We have to go in order, though. So, let's start with Friday. If you've listened to my other episodes so far, you know that I'm in a debate for what I want to do with my full-time job. On the side, I work on computers, own a clothing brand, a marketing agency, I'm developing a fitness app, and I'm also working on another business, which I don't want to give too much insight on until I finalize the details. But in short, because of these projects, I need a full-time job that A, pays the bills, and B, provides flexibility. You might be asking, Why don't you just focus on one of your projects and turn that into your career? To answer that, I don't really know. Some people say it's my ADD. I have ideas, and if I don't do them, no one else is going to. But I am eventually going to have to be more focused in a specific direction. So despite the enticing salary offers I got from a hospital in Indiana to be their IT administrator, and my previous job to go back to the IT department there, I declined them both. Still, I need more money, and quite frankly, I'm not a huge fan of the software platform I work on now, even though I like the company as a whole. The company has several software platforms that I can look into, though. I decided to apply for two different positions. One was for the same platform, but as a marketing specialist, which I love to do, and I'm exceptional at it. I did not get that job, though. The other was for our company's fitness platform, which is much more up my alley in terms of what I enjoy doing. But now I'm getting nervous. I just declined two jobs that pay way more money than I make now, and also more than the position I hope to get with this software company. I'm putting all my eggs into one basket by declining the other job offers and banking on getting this one. The truth is, I'm not even sure I would have taken those job offers even if I had turned down this one beforehand. Why? I thought long and hard about it. When I first quit my previous job, I wanted to focus on my projects, but I couldn't afford not to have a full-time job while I went into debt to pursue them. Something else had to compensate. The ability to work remote provided a lot of flexibility, and it also offered a lot of room to grow, whereas my previous job and most other IT jobs tend to be stagnant. Also, I realized I hate IT in general. In fact, I've even been considering being done with my computer shop altogether. I love using computers and I understand them very well, but I hate the liability that comes with working on them. In other words, it wasn't just about the money. It was about what I can do that I don't hate and preferably would enjoy, and what will allow me the freedom to focus on my other endeavors. This software company, as with a lot of other up-and-coming ones, allows for unlimited flexible paid time off. 
which means I still have to submit a request for time off and it has to be approved, but there's not like a, a limit to 80 hours a year or whatever. They also provide us unlimited access to Udemy courses where I can continue to grow my knowledge base. Here's a brief highlight of how the interview went. Hey Sean, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Doing good, thanks for uh, joining us. Yeah, absolutely, thanks for the opportunity. That sort of connection to fitness uh, is something that's really key. I think that it's something that we look for and hope to find in a lot of folks that work on this team um, for the precise reason is that, you know, while there's certainly an element of technical troubleshooting and, and bug hunting and things of that nature, a large part of what you're doing is basically communicating with people in the fitness industry, trying to understand their needs better, and then doing everything you can to bridge that gap between what they don't have and what they can have. A good example of an issue that we've been dealing with now, when a member logs into the app and they're trying to attach a PDF file to certain jobs, uh, it's currently not being able to show up on Android devices to see that attachment. That was a really thorough answer, I appreciate it. Um, can you tell us about a time you had to learn something new very quickly? Uh, my personal feedback towards the content training was that I wasn't getting as much out of it because the software is so, you've just got to do it. Uh, I'll go through the process and provide screenshots or a video demo. If it's an issue that I'm struggling with myself and I just don't know uh, what's going on, uh, the first thing that I'll do is replicate it on my side. If I'm able to replicate the issue, then I'll look it up and verify the process in our knowledge base. Um, if I'm not able to find the information in the knowledge base because it's just so unique and specific, I'll reach out to uh, one of the relevant channels on our Slack. If I'm not getting a response from the support channel, then, because that happens, everybody's busy, I'll reach out to a couple of my peers and see if they have any uh, recommendations or I'll reach out to uh, one of my people's leaders. In the event that I'm still struggling to find an answer, let's say uh, the customer has now been waiting three or four minutes for an answer. I'll do my best to check back in with them periodically if I know I can get an answer within the next 10 minutes. Um, you know, hey, I'm sorry, you know, I'm still working on this, I'll be just another minute. If I still can't find an answer, let's say after the 10 minutes of troubleshooting, um, then I will apologize for the inconvenience, uh, explain to them that I'm still working on this and what I can go ahead and do uh, if they have other things that they need to take care of is that I will go ahead and open up a ticket and I'll reach back out to you as soon as I get an update and then we can go from there. Taylor, any follow-up on that one? No, it's a, a really thorough process. It sounds very similar um, really to the, the process and standard operating procedure that we have here. So a uh, great, great and thorough answer. Thank you. And now we wait. 586 candidates applied for this role on LinkedIn alone. This is not including other internal applicants, ones who applied directly on the website, or ones who may have applied on other websites like Indeed or Glassdoor. So we'll see. Okay, so word for my sponsor real quick. You guys know the drill hopefully at this point. You can support the podcast by obviously subscribing to it, but you can also check out my sponsor for the podcast, which for the time being happens to be my clothing brand too. So go to hustleharderlife.com and check out the designs I have currently, and new ones will be coming out this month too. I appreciate you all for listening, and now we're back to the podcast. Stop trying. Just give up. You're making it worse. You're sabotaging. You're not good enough. You just need to be alone and stop bothering people. You're not qualified. You're not smart enough. Come on, man. What were you thinking? He's going to quit like you do everything else. You don't have enough experience for this position. If they wanted to be around you, you would know. You don't looks the part you don't fit in this area dude she wants nothing to do you've with ruined her. everything you're just gonna bring her down like you do everyone else no one takes you serious you're gonna fail look what you did what the fuck man you're worthless you're just not good enough you need to move on you gotta get out of this place let it go let it fucking go for at least 12 to 16 hours a day. That is the chaos that's running in my head. The hesitation, the self-criticism, the conviction,
constantly making myself the victim, throwing myself a pity party that no one is ever going to show up to. I'm constantly overthinking and overanalyzing every little thing. I realize this is a toxic trait, and I tend to project my insecurities onto other people, and that in turn weighs them down. It's like a disease though. Some people think there's an on and off switch for that sort of thing, and there's not. It's an instinct. Saturday it was the worst. I had gotten day drunk while shooting pool, and against my better judgment, I said something that I shouldn't have in a text. Not like derogatory or anything, but certainly selfish. I felt resentful, unimportant, irrelevant, and in my intoxication, I responded in a way that reflected that. I remember that moment distinctly because my friend Jandy was sitting next to me at the bar when she drunkenly called me out for suddenly going quiet. I did not get quiet. We were chatting Kathy's for like an hour, and all of a sudden, you were talking for an heartbreaking moment, but you were also impacting somebody else, and all of a sudden, now you've been here. So I kind of left you alone, but I'm like, dude, you're still here. And maybe you're still like, yeah, I don't know what kind of life you got, but you're The worst part of it was for the following few hours, I tried to justify my actions. I was unintentionally gaslighting the other person because I was selfish. The other part of this is, I know I'm fairly decent with words. So despite my drunken state, I can write a text that cuts like a dagger. I recall three or four messages I would later delete out of my own embarrassment. The regret wasn't until I got home while I laid in bed and reflected on my actions. The negative thoughts started spiraling into my head and all I could think about was how out of character it was for me in the heat of the moment. But then I thought to myself, how out of character was it actually? The truth is, the situation was not one that I'm in a lot. So it's hard to say whether that's my natural instinct to react that way, or if it's just a lack of experience of being able to respond maturely. I needed to assess my emotional maturity, and then I needed to learn how to grow from this situation, regardless of the damage that had been done. What I'm saying is that you may, may be emotionally immature in this instance, when it comes to like your heart and like feelings with relationships, I don't think that you are necessarily emotionally immature in all aspects of your life. For context, we're referring to relationships in general, whether it be friendships, dating, work, etc. This is me coming to terms with the fact that just because I know how to do things doesn't mean I know how to relate to other people on a level that reciprocates the same energy. And maybe I need to adjust my expectations. We've had this discussion before. For a guy, you are very in touch with your emotions. Okay, I don't like how that sounds. <laughs> well, most men aren't. See, we're trying to be more emotional. We're trying to we're be trying more to... emotionally mature. I, I mean mature. that as a compliment because most oh, okay. men aren't very in touch with their emotions. And... I worry about how what the perception of my podcast is because, like, it is very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Like, it just throws it all out there. I'm like, man, Who you haven't cares? listened to it. It's 2023. Somebody who can't be vulnerable is emotionally immature. Growth. <sighs>
the reality is. The reality. Fuck. <laughs> the reality is. That's going to be it for this episode. On next week's episode, hopefully I have an update for you on where I'm at with my job or where I'm not. I also have an appointment with a psychiatrist who will hopefully give me some objective insight on where I'm at mentally as opposed to just really supportive friends, uh, which I appreciate all of those friends as well. Uh, But yeah, so we'll see you next week. Again, thanks for listening, and make sure you hit the follow button if you enjoyed this podcast.